everyone, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Bonnie Krebs, creator of Watercolor the Art Impressions Way. And I thought I would take one more week on the cottages and the bridges. I just love these so much. And last time I did a small version of the bridges. So this, this little one right here. And I wanna come back to this one again. And what I've done this time, you can see that the railing is missing here. So I've just inked this part of the bridge. And I want you to remember that you can do that. So these things are really versatile. You don't necessarily need to ink the whole thing. And I've placed it really close to this little cabin. And so I don't wanna to have to deal with that railing. I didn't wanna mask it off and I just thought it would be easier just to leave that off. So I'm gonna show you how to put this together. Super simple version. I just wanted to spend one more week on this because I just love these so much. They're just so fun. So let's uh, let's get going. We're gonna need a few things. So we are going to need the bridge set. And I am going to use this one here, the larger one. In the cottage set, you could use any of these. So this is actually called the garden shed sets. These are little garden sheds. I'm gonna use this one, but of course any of these will work. In the branches set, one of my favorites, this one, I'm gonna use it for a little tree in the background. And remember, you don't necessarily have to use the exact thing I'm using. A lot of these things are versatile. So if you have little trees, you have little branches, use those by all means, they work great. So I am just going to use this one, but like I said, you can use any that you have. Uh, the little tiny vine, I'm gonna use one of these. So this one right here. And then in the mini flower set, these little dots here, but again, uh, use the things that you have. You don't, uh, you know, what I'm doing is giving you ideas on how to put these things together. So use, uh, use what you have. And then the little filler flower, this little guy, use this all the time. This is probably my most favorite stamp, but it's just so versatile and I just love that you can use it in so many different ways. So here we go. We're gonna start out by stamping that little cottage. So this one right here, and I am going to ink it in two colors. So those of you who have watched my videos before, you can probably guess what colors they are. It is the dark blue and the dark brown. So because this is a wooden structure, we're gonna start with the dark blue and we're going to end with the dark brown. That just sort of makes the dark brown more predominant, so more of a or the uh, predominant color. And I'm going to stamp it off because I don't want a dark outline around it when I'm stamping it. Okay, so a very light, even touch. That looks perfect right there. And then we're going to place the bridge right underneath it. So you can see here, it's, it's sort of right right underneath. And this this little house, you're, we're facing it straight on. So there's no side in view, no side view of the house. So it's straight on on our, on our picture. Okay, so let's ink this up. We're gonna do this in two colors again. So same combination because this is a little wooden fence. We're going to ink it in the dark blue first. And you can see that I am not inking this section up here. I'm just doing this part down at the bottom just this little section here. And you know, you can shorten this fence too. So you could maybe ink just this part, you know, or this part. So always keep that in mind that you can, because you're using stamps, you can use the parts that you wanna use. Okay, and again, I'm going to stamp this off because I don't want that to be too dark. And now I'm gonna use my positioner. I wanna make sure I get that in the right place and I could probably guess but it's just so much easier just to use this little L bar and make sure that looks pretty good right there. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna place this back and now I'm going to stamp my little bridge right in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now let's go on to the, uh, the little shed, the little garden shed, and let's begin by pulling that color out of the line. So I'm gonna dip my brush in water and I always start where I think it's the darkest and that's going to be under this overhang. So I'm just gonna kind of drag my brush along this overhang. You can see how that's gonna bring that roof out. And then I'm gonna cook down along this little detail here and around, around the door. And just kind of work your way around. And let me, tell you one thing on here because I see this a lot. When you're adding water to the lines, you're not, you're actually not brushing the line. You're not adding water to the line. In other words, your brush is not going over the, t over the line. What you're doing is you are, you're bringing your brush next to the line, next to it, 
and that is going to pop that line up. So when we drag our brush along this line, you can see how that pops that window up and makes it look more three-dimensional. Do you see that? It's, a, it's a, such a little thing, but it makes all the difference. So always remember that you're kind of dragging your brush along the edge, you know, that you want to pop out. And I'm just going inside these little, these little window panes here. Same with the door. Just dragging my brush along these edges. Same, same with this roof. You can see my brush is going along next to the plank and along next to this, this little edge. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do for right now on that. Let's go over to the bridge now and do the same thing. So we're just gonna drag our brush along here and just pull this color out. You know, these little boards here that are hanging over the top, those are gonna be, this area is gonna be darker. Okay, that's good for now. We'll come back to this. So now what we want to do is figure out where the water is going. And you know, this could be a little intimidating here because you don't know what's going on. So what I like to do is figure out what's happening here. So the easiest place to start is under the bridge because we know that the bridge is going to be over water or over some sort of gully or something. So take your pencil and draw those lines in. Okay, so just like that, draw those lines in and decide where your water is going. And I think I'm gonna bring mine around like this. So now we're gonna take it along to the back side and just kind of decide where this water is going along this way. Okay, does that make more sense now that you can see where this water is? And then of course our uh, little background, so you can draw that in as well. And we've got our little cabin sitting on a hill and it just, it makes it a lot easier to add these things in where they're gonna be going, your grasses, your flowers, and your background when you do that. And you can always erase these lines. So it's just, it's, it's super easy to take those pencil lines out and it just helps so much to see where things are going. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some background in here now. And I'm just taking <clears throat> some green this happens to be number 177, but of course you can use any green that you have. And just, just kind of brush this color in. Just brush it in. This is just the beginning. And under here, got this little bridge kind of coming up the bank here. And then let's add a little bit more color onto the other side. You don't have to, you know, go exactly where your pencil lines are, but it really does help to kind of see where things are going. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mix a little blue now with this green and just do something really light in the background. So I'm just gonna mix this just to give it a little cooler color. And I'm just gonna add a little of this into the background, just super light. Don't ever stress out about stuff like this. So easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our water in and I'm just gonna use the same blue and just kind of brush it in underneath the bridge, just like this. Over on this side. There we go. We're getting our perspective a little bit better here. And so we can let that dry now. Let's, let's go ahead and put a little bit of sky in. So I'm really adding water to this now and just doing a little bit of this in the background. So we're gonna put some trees in and sometimes it's easier to put that sky in first so that you're not trying to get the blue in after you've got your trees and you're putting the foliage and stuff in. Okay, that's helping a lot, I think, to just see where everything's going. I'm just coming in along this bank now with a little darker color. That will also help. And once 
Once that, that uh, water is dry, we can come in with a shadow underneath here. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and finish up this little, this little cabin. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to the windows and I'm just gonna put a little blue in here. Uh, don't stress out about this. You know, it's just, it's better if you keep it loose and don't worry so much about the details. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some color onto the roof. And I'm using a warm brown here. This is uh, 947, and then of course our dark brown, the 969. We're gonna use that one too. And I'm just gonna take some of this brown, and I think this would be a good trim color here. And I think I will put it on the window as well. Just brush this on. And then in between here in these little window panes. And I'm going to mix a little of this brown now with the green and put some color on the door. really fun to do that. Don't forget you can do that on your palette. So if you think you don't have the exact color, just mix it. Mix it onto your palette. So easy. And actually you'll be surprised at what you mix. I found some of the coolest colors uh, by accident. And then I don't want to wash my palette off because I have such cool colors on there. So then I want to save them. So that means I have quite a few palettes in my drawer. I have lots of palettes in my drawer, full of ink. And I also don't like to waste the ink. So I know that sounds weird, but it's so much easier for me just to pull a palette out and take some of that ink off the palette. And you can see I'm kind of mixing a, a, a bit of color in here. You know, you're not, um, the more that you can mix and add extra color in here, I, I feel like the more realistic it is. You know, there's gonna be shadows and stuff going on here. And be sure to leave that highlight on the top. You can see that I have not come all the way to the top of this little shed and the roof. I haven't come all the way to the top. I wanna to see that light reflection up there. And now I'm gonna take some of my blue and I want a shadow under here and here. So this is the same blue I used in the water and the sky. And I'm just gonna drag some of this brown onto the window too. I'm not really sure what color this cabin is, but it's kind of a mix of color. But you know it's in the, sh it's in the shadows, so it's gonna have a lot of colors cast on it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go on to the little bridge now. And I'm going to add a little of this blue in here so I can get a shadow going and some more of this brown. And remember with watercolor, it's just the idea of things. So we're just showing that there's a little bridge, there's a little creek, we got a little cabin in the background. Don't, don't stress too much over the details. You know, when people get these things in the mail, you know, they just look at it at, at the picture overall and realize that you took the time to create something for them and it just means so much. And you know, we stress out so much over, you know, making sure everything's perfect and people don't care about that. They really don't. Okay, so dark underneath, that is so important that you do this dark color underneath. That's what's gonna kind of bring this bridge up and we're gonna see that dark all the way across here underneath, even, even in the grassy area, we're gonna see that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my fine tip and it's not super fine, but it's good enough for this. And this is my dark brown and I'm really darkening in these little support 
little support beams underneath this bridge just to, just to give it some depth. And you can see how that really, really brings that bridge up. And even in here, in between these little planks, uh, if you can just make a little you know, dot there, even in the windows, anytime that you can show something really, really dark, uh, it's gonna give you more dimension. See in here in this roof, uh, in here where the, you know, part of the planks are gone, in these little areas, it really, really does make a difference. Okay, let's go on to the next step and we're gonna put our trees in. And I'm just using this little branch, but like I said, you can use, um, you can use any, anything that you have. There's so many things that'll work here. That's always a dilemma when I'm doing these videos because I almost have too many choices now. Um, as to what to use. So that's why I always tell you, be sure that you, you know, see what you have first. If you're missing something or I'm showing, you know, that I'm using five or six different sets, you don't have to, if you don't have to, you know, rush out and get every one of those. You can look at what you have and see if what you have will work. And I just bet you it will. Okay, so now I'm going on to the little daisy bunch here. And I'm just adding some color in. So you can see I didn't add any water now to these little branches. I just kind of left them as they were. So kind of the idea here is hydrangeas, I think. It's kind of what it reminds me of next to this little cottage. And then I'm gonna come back in and just add a little foliage. So here's that tiny little vine, which I love. And I'm just gonna add a little foliage in here. Just the tip. So again, use the parts of the stamp that you want. Don't ink the whole thing up, you don't need to. Not with this, I'm just using the very, I'm just inking the very tip. And it's okay to stamp over things, totally okay. All right, now I'm gonna blend that all together. So the blue is gonna kind of mix with the green. It's a little bit farther in the distance, so it's gonna kind of all blend together. And remember, you're just bouncing your brush, so no brush strokes, just kind of bouncing your brush. And I'm just gonna put a little shadow under here and under these. And I think I'll just add a little more shadow onto this door. You could also do, you know, some detail in here if you wanted to, some detail into that. And I think even darker under here is good. Okay, so let's finish up by adding our little grass in here. This is another one of those staples that I just, I don't know, I almost think I use this in every video, but it just works so great. Just a little bit here and there, you know, just along this little creek bank, just to give the idea of the grass. So you don't have to, you don't have to do it everywhere. Just pull that color up, up and out. So easy. And I'm just gonna add a little more detail into this water. And the last step maybe is to add our little flowers in here. Just these little dots. 
and just stamp them in a bunch of times. And then just a tiny bit of water because you don't need a lot with these. And actually you can just leave them the way they are too. If you like that detailed, more detailed look, just leave them. Your own style will come out, I promise. It does every time. And even if you think I'm not an artist and someone told you you weren't an artist, you know, in third grade, and um, you believe that, you have a style. You really do, and it'll come out. The more that you do these little projects, the more your own style will come out. So fun. And it's also amazing how different they all look even though you're using stamps. Okay, that looks pretty good. One thing left to do, and that is to sign and date, which I will do right now. And put that in a frame or put it on a card and give it away. You're gonna make someone's day. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want more watercolor, follow me on Instagram, bonniekrebs.biblejournaling. I have lots more watercolor on there. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all again next week. Mm -hmm.